Amnesia is the single most important um, symptom in diagnosing um, symptomatology, um, extent of injury, um, predicting neurobehavioral issues long term. Um, we didn't talk about amnesia with your daughter, so let's start with your daughter. Um, does she remember the day of the accident? They were That's a good one. at the I Beagle thing? And yeah, she was at uh, the Beagle trial up in Upper Michigan. And I, to tell you the truth, I don't know if she knows the history because she's heard it mm -hmm. because of what we've talked about. She had her headphones on, and minutes before the accident, she actually had Tom's hard hat on from his tree trimming hard hat. And he, so. She that, had her father's hard hat on. Yeah, and she had just taken it off, and she had her headphones on, her earphones on. Still had all of her winter clothes on and stuff, but I, I don't know if she remembers any of it because she's heard it so many times. She remember being in Madison? Yeah. I don't think she remembers... I don't think she remembers two to three months after the accident, to tell you the truth. So she has s clearly some retrograde amnesia and two to three months of, of uh, retro retrograde amnesia. Um, sorry, two to three months of post traumatic amnesia. I would think so. Um, we'll ask her those questions when we interview her. What about when Otto's. Amnesia was probably never formally assessed, um, despite your um, efforts to have somebody look at it. Is that your understanding? That's what I understand. And what you were getting when you were talking to him was evidence of amnesia, correct? You would tell him something, he wouldn't remember it. Correct. He might remember it for a minute or two, but he wouldn't remember it an hour or the next day. I, would, I wouldn't even say it was minutes. It was talking to a Alzheimer's or dementia patient that was repeating, well, how is she today? She's doing really good. Well, how is she today? Well, she's doing really good. I mean, it was that instantaneous that he wasn't even cognitive that he was saying, maybe now, a question to me. If we were going to prioritize memories with the most important thing being that your daughter's been in an accident and she's in, in um, had brain surgery and is in Madison as, as, the, as the 10 on the 10-point scale. Mm -hmm. um, he remembered that mm -hmm. almost from the beginning. Right. But when you get less significant memories, he had more and more difficulty? Correct. Conversation was non-existent. And there wasn't any because it just was too much repetition. Of Throughout this whole time, though, he did remember his daughter was in Madison with yes. a brain injury. Yes. Can you explain? Elaborate on what he did and didn't remember. Oh. Um, when he came to see Maria, he had talked to me about the accident and what had happened. And, um, it was very little of what he remembers pulling off to the side of the road. Other than that, I don't think he remembers anything after that. Until, I don't know how much retention he actually had, but he had talked to the passenger in the car, in our truck, excuse me, who had told him and filled in the blanks. And then they were trying to do as best they could legal action on the person that hit us, trying to take care of that portion and trying to get the story straight, you know, in his own mind, I think. And it was, it was uh, Chris, our passenger, that actually filled in the blanks. How long did it take him to be able to even keep the the, re, the reconstructed story straight? I would say a good three three weeks when pieces were falling into place where they where he could actually repeat it and it would come out in the same sequence or you know it was fluid as far as what Chris had filled him in on. Um, other than that, his daughter was in Madison, did he have, was he able to grasp any of the other details of what happened to her? No, not till actually, till he came to the hospital and saw her, I think was where he could put it all together. And I know he wanted to come instantly when he got released from the hospital, but I didn't think he was anywhere near 
ready to see this, to deal with it, to, you know, to come in and participate. When does he get released? I think it was um, about six days after the accident. And again, that's just because of his, the broken bone. Broken bone, and then they did a surgical ear repair. And Talk to me about the ear. First, you don't, you only saw it? When he came down. Mm -hmm. And when he came down, he actually had a piece of foam, yellow foam that was sutured in place to keep the ear in its shape and try to get a similar structure, you know, to it. And um, then his foot was up in a cast and he was quite fun. He was quite fun because I had two, two kids on my hands. You know, it was kind of, he felt bad. I think he really did. I think that's what ate him up the most. And what ate me up the most was I think he was like, come on, get up and do something, but I know you can't. You're supposed to have your foot up 24-7, you know, and I, that was hard.